Well, we're on the banks of the Indian River, and if the clouds weren't there, you would actually see the launch, pla launch pad, Complex 39, where the Falcon 9 sits right now. Hopefully those clouds will clear, and at 4.33, they'll get a go for launch. If they can't fly today, contingency plans to fly on Saturday. If they can't fly Saturday, then maybe on Sunday. As you said right now, 60% chance they could go get an update from the Air Force at about 12, 12.30 this afternoon. You know, this is a test flight. They call it Demo 2, and it could pave the way for a flight to the moon and then eventually Mars. So there's a lot at stake with what's going to happen today. And of course, it would also end a drought. For the first time in nine years, they hope to fly astronauts from U.S. soil. The last time that happened was July 8th, 2011, when Atlas, uh, Atlantis, excuse me, the uh, space shuttle Atlantis flew. Up until then, we have de been dependent on Russia to fly U.S. astronauts to the International Space Station. The coronavirus pandemic threw a pretty big curveball at the planners for the NASA SpaceX manned mission. Planning for space travel is always intense, always meticulous. This mission, because of COVID-19, made even more complex. We are ensuring that the only essential personnel are near them. They're wearing masks and gloves. We're cleaning the training facility twice daily. Uh, I think we're really um, doing a great job to ensure that uh, uh, we are not impacting the safety or, or the health of the astronauts' lives. And we're largely doing the same thing for our employees. We are nothing uh, if our employees uh, uh, aren't in great health uh, and, uh, and able to work with a clear mind uh, and a healthy system. So we're taking temperatures, we're wearing masks in public areas, we are um, social distancing. NASA routinely quarantines astronauts before a trip into space. That's standard operating procedure. But health procedures were ramped up considerably this go-round. Bob Behnken and Doug Hurley have been pretty isolated for some time. It's not just about their safety. The last thing they want to do is bring the virus to the crew on board the ISS. We knew it was going to be tough getting ready for launch. Um, but then in this new environment, we had to take even more precautions. Um, because it's really about not only Bob and Doug's safety, but it's also about the safety of the crew on board the International Space Station. Much of the support staff has been working from home. The engineering staff that does come into the Kennedy Space Center or the Johnson Space Center in Houston is outfitted in special personal protective gear and safety procedures continue right up until and through launch. Contact with the two until they climb aboard Crew Dragon will be very limited. When we understood we were going to be working in this new environment, we and the SpaceX team worked on how we needed to amend how we were working with the different crews to make sure that the, they were, had all the safety and health precautions needed to make sure that they didn't get sick. And, and that crew, honestly, also extends past the Bob and Doug, but also critical um, mission support team members, um, NASA team members that need to support these activities, and looking at even how we're able to do our testing and our um, support of the vehicle integration activities. We ha we've had to relook and assess and retool how we do all of that to make sure that we're keeping our teams healthy and safe.